Hey guys, I'm Rhonda Draculas with RK3 Designs and we are gonna show you a fantastic, fun faux finish that's gonna take cornhole boards, a bar top, your shower walls, anything that you can even think of and take it to the next level. This is going to be a fantastic, fun video. So I hope you enjoy it. So we're using three quarter inch Medex MDF and the Medex MDF is a water resistant MDF. So it's really, really good to use uh, on any project that's gonna be around water. These are cornhole boards, they'll be outside. So we just wanna make sure that uh, we don't have any water damage. So what we've done, we've put two coats of the stone coat countertop undercoating, let that dry. And then we came back with black gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. And the reason that we're using the Rust-Oleum spray paint is because that is not a water-based paint. And we're gonna be letting water sit on this uh, for quite a while. So we wanna make sure there's no reactions going on there. Here's the fun part, plain water. And then what I've done is I've set my nozzle so that we're getting pretty good sized drips. I want a variety of sizes of my water drips. I don't want just a lot of fine mist. You can do this a variety of ways. You don't have to use a spray bottle. You can actually come in here and put it on your hand, make big drips like this, flick it with your fingers, just about any way that you wanna do it or a combination of ways to get a really cool look. So we have all of the water laid down like we like it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a 3D look of actual water droplets. By using three different colors of the paint and the way that we spray it, the angle, we're gonna create an illusion that it's 3D. So we're gonna start off with our darkest of the three paints. And we're gonna just have our, say our light source is gonna be at this end of the board. So the dark color is gonna be on the bottom side of the drips. So we're gonna come down here and we're very lightly gonna spray. And I'm not doing it really heavy at all. More of just kind of a misting fog. Get my edges. And we'll do the same thing here. Now we'll come in with our mid-tone. This is brilliant blue. The first blue that we used was navy blue, and these are all Rust-Oleum colors. Man, that already looks kind of 3D. Okay, so our lightest color, we're gonna come from the opposite direction to give an illusion of the light source coming on top of the droplets. Okay, so what we'll do now, we'll let the water evaporate and then we'll go to the next step, which will be to apply a coat of epoxy. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. All of the water has evaporated and now we have a super smooth, dry finish. During that 24 hours, we had a special guest sneak in. Hey, I'm Whitney from Tropical Epoxy. I'm down in the Florida Keys in Marathon. Last year I took Rhonda's Pro class and I was so motivated. I started my business and business has been booming since yes. then. Booming. Booming. It's awesome and I think it's just gonna get better in our field and uh, so I'm here visiting. Rhonda's awesome. She's accepted me into her family and I'm so appreciative to be here and uh, we're about to do our first clear coat on uh, these boards here. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll uh, put a clear coat. We'll let that dry overnight. Then I'm, I'm gonna come back and put a logo on these boards and then we'll do a final flood coat. This finish is something 
you can do on any surface. Um, you don't have to just have it on fun game boards. This would look amazing in a bar. It would look really cool in a maybe a kid's bathroom or a pool house bathroom, anything. Um, so this is really, really turned out so cool. Okay, so we're gonna mix up our clear epoxy and uh, we're gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio. We're using stone coat countertop epoxy. We're gonna pour part B first. Whitney, do you know why we pour part B first? <laughs> yep, uh, B, because it stands for be awesome always. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Be awesome always, that's how we remember. But we pour B first because B is less viscous. It's thinner, basically, than part A is. So what happens, when we put part B in first, then put part A, part A is going to fall through part B quicker and we're gonna get a little more accurate reading that way. All right, so we're using three ounces per square foot. Now we're gonna mix for two minutes. Now when I mix with a paddle, if I have enough epoxy, I try to keep my paddle under the surface of the epoxy when I'm, using, when I'm stirring it and that way I don't get quite as many bubbles in there. Okay guys, I'm gonna give you a pro tip. As you continue to use your mixer, and if you don't clean it off every time, you start getting these little, kind of these little fingers, these little sharp points. When you're stirring, or when you're mixing, and those little points hit the side of your bucket, you could bust your bucket really easy. So instead of panicking and losing all of your material out and then having to take it and pour it in another bucket, have another bucket sitting here. So all you have to do is drop that bucket inside there and that's gonna plug that hole long enough for you to be able to finish mixing, add your colorant and get it onto your um, project, onto your surface. All right, so I'm gonna give you another pro tip. When, after you're done mixing, take your stir stick and you're going to stir the edge of your bucket and then you'll hand mix. You'll stir, scrape the edge, and then you'll hand mix. I do this several times and the reason I do this is because all of that material that's on the side of your bucket isn't completely mixed. And if I go and pour this now on my surface and I didn't scrape my edges and stir it, when I poured it, I'm, I'm very likely to get sticky spots in certain areas. And a really good way to make sure that you know that your material's been uh, mixed properly is if you turn it upside down, when you're done, let it dry a couple of days, that whole inside should pull out just as clean and you'll sh you should have a bucket that's just as clean as when you started. If you pull it out and you have a lot of sticky spots on your bucket, that means that you didn't mix your product well enough. Okay, you ready to add a little bit of halo? Yeah. All right. So. It's a very, very, very fine glitter. It's by Just Resin. I'll have a link where you can get this product. We get it from Artist Till Death. And we're gonna add a very, very tiny amount. So Whitney, I'm gonna let you do this. And if you get too much, we're gonna blame it on you. All right. <laughs> put the glitter on That's me. it. All right, so just get a little spit of it. Yeah, is that good? Is that good? Yes. What are we thinking? Do it a little, a little bit less. off. There, right there. Yeah, we can put more. You can always okay. add more, you can't take yeah. it away. So we're gonna, see how little bit that is? We only want a hint. So That's we're gonna awesome. stir it, because we just want this to be a just a hint of eye-catching sparkle. All right, so now we're ready to apply this to the board. Okay, so like I said, we're doing three ounces per square foot. These boards are eight square feet each, so we've got 16 square feet. So we've got a total of 36 ounces, and we're gonna apply half to each board. We're not gonna trial this on this surface because this is just spray paint, and if we use a trial, very easily can scratch it. So we're just gonna use our hand. So you ready to get in there? Yeah. All right. I am. Here she goes. Okay, here we go. So we're just gonna spread it out. Mm -hmm. I pull it kind of like in the, I pull yep. it to end to end. Yep. Does he have enough? 
just kind of start coating it. And like Rhonda would say, there's no rhyme to reason. You just kind of get it coated, get it on there. And then one other thing that I learned from Rhonda in her pro class was that you always coat your top surface first before doing your edges, because you really want to have enough material to coat the top surface and the surface area. You are making an A so far. So I'm going to do the same thing. I just kind of cut my hand, and I almost use it almost like a trial, and I just run it along the edge. Now, if this were any other type of finish, you could definitely trial it, but we just want to be super, super careful. When you're doing your edges, you really want to pull your epoxy down over the edge and then up under. You want to cup the edge. That way you get a nice seal because later on there's another step that we're going to be doing, uh, which is the red guard. And you want to make sure that you have all of this coated under here. Another reason we like to use our hand is because if we just let the epoxy roll, it's going to develop a little drip line right here, right on your edge. And what we want it to do is we want that epoxy to roll and give us a nice clean edge. Okay, so we have it all laid out, nice and even. Our edges are taken care of. Now we're gonna torch. So when we torch, we'll come in about an inch and a half to two inches from the surface. And we're just gonna take that torch and move it across. We're not gonna stay in one spot because you don't wanna burn or get your epoxy too, too hot. All right, so we've torched it. I'll let it sit two or three minutes. Torch it again, get all those bubbles out. Let it dry overnight. We'll come back tomorrow and we're gonna apply a vinyl sticker and a flood coat. Okay guys, so our first clear coat is dried overnight and now I have a special guest. He's gonna help us to put the decal on. This is Keith McGinnis and you are from? From Eagle, Nebraska, and my business is KCDC Designs. All right, so he's here for our pro class, so we are putting him to work. All right, so we're gonna give you guys a pro tip. He, uh, Keith told me that if you use foamy, foamy? Spray foam glass cleaner. All right, that it's going to be a miracle worker, <laughs> and we'll get this logo to get on really easy, so. Take it away, Keith. What we used to use back in the day when cars had wood grain paneling on the station wagons is we would use a spray foam glass cleaner to put on the vinyl decals. You and just dated yourself. I know, big time. <laughs> okay, let's see what he has. Can we see our lines? I'm gonna put a little on there too. Okay. All right. Right direction, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got that line there. Right there. there we go. All right, are okay. we good? And how about our up and down lines? Well, Kenny took my glasses, so oh, I can't see. There's that one there. Got and it. There's that one there. All right. Okay. We're square that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, square on there. It looks like we need to come over just a hair right there. Yeah, our center is off a little bit here. There. Okay, I'm going from the center out. So I know I'm gonna have questions about this. The glass cleaner is not going to give us any kind of reaction with our epoxy, correct? That is correct. Awesome. So the purpose behind using the spray foam glass cleaner is when you set a vinyl decal down, as soon as it touches, it's there for good and you're not pulling it back up. So the spray foam glass cleaner allows you to be able to move it around and give you some time to work out the bubbles you just taught me something. I've used soap and water before, but I've never used... Yeah, and I think it's the water uh, in the soap and water part of it, uh -huh. uh, opposed to the spray cleaner, <clears throat> that foam, mm -hmm. that kind of gives you that cushion between the two. Yeah. So, now the magic appears. I'm gonna wipe all that out. Yep. I can handle that part. You're gonna pull the plastic off too. Huh, I'm gonna pull the plastic off? Yeah. Okay, so you know if it doesn't work, I'm going to blame all of this on you and everybody on YouTube <laughs> is going to know this was your fault. How about that? I didn't say my name, did I? Yes, absolutely. And I gave your address and phone number. Okay, start from one corner. Okay. You're already messing it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so far, so good. Looks good. And guys, this finish, Keith was saying, would also look amazing on shower walls. All right. We're going to work out a few. Okay. Well, see that just shoot right out of there? Yeah. 
like a zit. <laughs> Dermatology <laughs> at its finest. This could be fun too. So it's. Oh! That's so satisfying. <laughs> oh man, that looks good. All right. I did. That turned out That good. looks amazing. Good job. Okay. Okay. By golly. Yes. Okay, guys. That's how it's done. So, what we'll do now, we'll let everything dry and we will put a flood coat. All right, guys, so the decals are on and we're gonna put our final flood coat. We've added a little bit of the halo, which is the same thing that we added to our first clear coat. All right, so what I like to do is once I have my material laid down, I'll torch it just a little bit. Helps me to spread it out. You can use a trial at this point, but I don't um, really like to do that. I like to use my hands. So here we go. And I'm not gonna address my edges on the first pass. Now, if your material's cool and you're having a hard time getting it to spread out, you can then take your torch again to spread it out a little easier. Again, when we do our edges, the reason I like to use my hand is I'm gonna cut my fingers up over the edge and I'll run the material over and push it up underneath the edge. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. What would you do with this finish? Where would you put it? I'd love to hear from you guys. All of the products that we used on this video is on my website, rk3designs.com. We also have an online course. Check it out, onlineepoxypro.com. So remember, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for future notifications. That way you will know when we post another video. All right, guys, until next time, you know what the routine is. Don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.